Hey, Carolina. How have you been holding up lately? I hope life didn't drain your bank account or anything. <laughs> Just messing with you. I can't even express how much I've missed you. It's crazy to think we'd bump into each other here. Lauren, why are you texting me out of nowhere? We haven't spoken in years since you ran away and eloped with Matthew. I've tried reaching out to you, but it seems like you were avoiding me. Oh, well, let's not dwell on that anymore. It feels like a lifetime ago. Honestly, I can hardly recall the details of what went down. All I can say is that Matthew was a total jerk, and I've happily moved on to marry someone way better than him, like a thousand times over. So what's your take on it? I think I deserve a big congrats for that, don't you think? Oh, really? That's new information to me. I had no idea that you had already gotten married to someone else. I'm happy for you, sis. I wish I could be there to celebrate with you on your special day. Oh, don't worry about it. I mean, we didn't exactly have room for peasants at my wedding. <laughs> just kidding. So, what's keeping you busy these days? I just went on my lunch break. How are you? Your lunch break? Wait, does that mean... You're working? Yes, that's right. Oh, I guess I was right. What do you mean? Your family is poor, right? Wow, can you believe it? It's been five long years and you're still stuck in that pit of poverty. Geez, it looks like I made the perfect call by not inviting you to my wedding, huh? If I had made that mistake, your poor aura would have surely ruined the whole event. Why do you say that? Well, if you're just slaving away at work every day, doesn't that mean your husband's job is just a pathetic paycheck? I mean, come on. If he was actually worth anything, you wouldn't have to work like a commoner. Um, not exactly. Oh, and let me tell you, I spotted your husband trudging off to work in those shabby, tattered rags. And word on the street is that you guys are crammed into some dingy little apartment with your daughter. No wonder you're slaving away trying to make ends meet. Looks like you really hit the jackpot with that loser you married. He can't even provide for his own family. My condolences to you, really. I think you might be jumping to conclusions. Things aren't as tight as you think they are. I've actually been working before Jasper and I got married. Oh, really? Well, trust me, sweetheart, I've got the inside scoop. No matter how badly you want to throw in the towel, you can't just depend on that sorry excuse for a husband you've got there. How about buying your husband some decent clothes every now and then, huh? Maybe then he won't resemble the beggar he is right now. But hey, who am I kidding? It's not like you care. Actually, my husband is just really into retro fashion. So your husband's hobby is scavenging through trash for worn out clothes? Gross. That's seriously repulsive. By the way, my husband has a heap of clothes that he's worn once and doesn't give a damn about anymore. Feel free to swing by my place and grab whatever you want, because those rags are for the trash anyway. I'm sorry, but I think there's a misunderstanding here. My husband doesn't need secondhand clothing from anyone. He has a wardrobe filled with brand new clothes that he truly enjoys wearing and feels confident in. <laughs> It's hilarious how you're still desperately trying to come up with excuses to hide your poverty. Well, go ahead and fabricate all the stories you want. It won't change the fact that you made a colossal mistake marrying that deadbeat of a husband. Oh, well, to think about it, I shouldn't be too harsh on you. I mean, I bet it's already a blessing for you to have found someone who's actually interested in marrying you, right? You've always been a loser, so it's no surprise. And just like I said... Money really isn't as tight as you think it is. If that were true, you wouldn't need to work anymore, right? Wives married to rich husbands never have to lift a finger. It's only the poor ones, like you, who have to hustle multiple jobs to keep their family afloat. We have a lot of responsibility at our jobs, and it would really hurt our workplaces if we left. Hmm. I'm not sure what you mean when you say responsibility. My husband, for example, has real responsibility at his job. He's the foreman at the factory he works at. He even got a promotion just as we were planning to move here. If your husband doesn't have a job like that, there's no way he could support your family. 
Um, thanks for your concern, but my husband and I are doing just fine. We aren't poor or anything like that. Hey, it's totally okay if you're going through some tough times financially. Remember, you've got me as your sister, right? If you ever find yourself in a financial pinch, just give me a call and I'll be more than happy to help you out. In fact, you can even move into my house and stay with our family if you want. That's really nice of you, but I... Oh, no problem at all. But hey, I can't let you stay at my house for free, you know? Here's an idea. Since one of our family's maids just quit, you can totally come and take over her job. What do you think? What? Now you're asking me to become your maid? What is wrong with you? Look, is there a real reason why you texted me? Oh, yeah. You know, we just moved into town, so I wasn't sure where I could pick up an extra dresser for the house. But don't even bother recommending anything cheap or from a thrift store. I have standards, unlike some people. Oh, okay. You can go to the furniture outlet right off the highway. They have a bunch of stylish imported furniture as well as locally made things. I really recommend going there. That sounds right up my alley. The best part is that it's only a 10 minute drive or so. I'm sure you can find something nice there. Wow. For someone poor, you really have great taste. Oh, thanks. What a disappointment. I was actually hoping we could go together and indulge in some nostalgic childhood memories, but oh well, you're stuck working. I guess it's just the way it is. You poor folks have to slave away day and night just to put food on the table. I totally feel your pain, sis. No need to explain. I get it all too well. I'm really sorry. Work is really crazy this time of year. I can't leave unless it's an emergency. We can catch up another time if you want. Uh, whatever. I guess it's just the way things have to be. I mean, you clearly have no other options but to stay there and be the backbone of your family, right? What a bummer. Yeah, well, I've got to get back to work. Let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. Sorry to take up your whole break. No problem. Hey, Lauren, I wanted to talk to you about something. Sure, what's going on? I'm currently getting my toenails taken care of, and after that, it'll be time for my fingernails, so I won't be able to text you for a while. So make it snappy, okay? Well, when I went to pick up Sharon from kindergarten, she was crying. When I asked the teacher what happened, she said that Oliver told her, I don't want to play with a poor person. If I do, then I'll become poor too. Why would he say something like that? Huh, no need to get all worked up. I simply enlightened my son about how things really are in this world. Oh, and let me guess, your daughter is completely oblivious to the fact that your family is broke, huh? I bet you don't even have the guts to be honest with her, do you? Well, I can understand your hesitation. It must be such a disgrace to admit that to your own child. What's that supposed to mean? Hmm? You still don't get it? Honestly, I don't think someone of your social status could really understand this. I don't follow. Well, I've been talking with some other moms from kindergarten. They said you never meet up with them for lunch or anything. Well, I'm always working during the week. Exactly. You can't do anything like that because you have no choice but to work along with your husband to support your family. On the other hand, I'm lucky enough to have a husband who has a great job, so I don't need to work a day in my life. I try to meet up for lunch or playdates if it's on the weekend. You have to understand that I can't be available every time you want me to be. Even then, you barely come, right? You're just using your job as an excuse to cover up the fact that you can't afford a simple lunch or anything that involves spending money. You have no idea how exhausting it is for someone to be so well off like me to be around struggling to get by like you. So, unfortunately, I think it's for the best that you don't associate with me or the other mothers anymore. If you want, you can hang around other low-class families like yours. You think we're low-class? You're entitled to think whatever you want about us, but you should be careful about exposing your child to your own prejudiced views. Oh my god, nothing is getting through your thick skull. It's annoying. What? 
I'll make this clear so even someone like you can understand. I don't want my precious son to associate himself with a low-class kid like your daughter. She's going to end up morally corrupting him. But they're cousins, Lauren. What's wrong if they hang out with each other? What if they're cousins? Fact still remains that your daughter is a threat to my son. I have to protect him from people like you and your daughter. So I'm taking a stand and choosing who he's allowed to play with. That reminds me, one of the other mothers said something similar to me. You should be careful who your daughter plays with. A lot of parents these days push their own agenda on their children. Those types of kids end up being a really bad influence. Yeah, sure. What a stupid thing to say. Maybe once your husband stops wearing clothes from 30 years ago, you can say something to me. I'll tell then. Know your place and speak only once spoken to. Got it? Oh, look who it is. Carolina, darling. Is your husband still rocking those raggedy clothes to work? I swear I saw a moth escape from one of his pockets. It must be such a struggle to be that destitute. Bless your heart. Can't you at least start with a simple how are you before diving headfirst into insults? Seems like you've got an abundance of free time to be throwing it away so carelessly like this. What? You should consider yourself lucky that I'm bothering to talk to anyone outside my social circle like you. But hey, pay attention because I've got something pretty important I want to share with you. How considerate of you. The last time we talked to each other was about a month ago. I get the feeling you're trying to ignore me every time I go to pick up Sharon from kindergarten. I've noticed you driving near our apartment when my husband gets home. Just to snicker at his clothes, I imagine. Stop whining, will you? Talking to me is like taking a look into the lavish world of the rich and famous. Be grateful. Did you have something you wanted to tell me? I'm about to go to bed. Oh, my bad. So, this Sunday, my husband and I scored an invite to have dinner at his boss's place. And when I say boss, I mean the big shot who happens to be the president of his company. You know, that super wealthy dude who owns the whole thing? Hmm, I'm pretty sure I know what the word president means. You don't have to waste your time trying to explain it. Yeah. Apparently, he tore down his old house and built a brand new mansion so his son and daughter-in-law could move in. It's a housewarming party. It's going to be a real who's who for all the higher ups at my husband's job. Anybody who's anybody is going to be there. Of course, since we're in that elite circle with my husband being a foreman and all, we're going to. What's more interesting is I found out that the boss's daughter-in-law is also the same age as me. Wouldn't hurt to rub elbows with her, huh? That's splendid. How great that they invited you. <laughs> you sound jealous. I just wanted to give you a little taste of what it's like living in the lavish world of wealth. Never in your wildest dreams could you or that raggedy husband of yours imagine what attending such an illustrious event would be like. Not to brag or anything. Just wanted to give you a peek into what our fabulous lives are like. I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Carolina? What do you think you're doing here? Come back to your filthy shack. No one wants you here. Hello, Lauren. Nice to see you here. Don't sidestep my question. How did you sneak into the party? A low-class vagrant like you isn't allowed here. I saw you talking with my husband's boss. What are you up to? I'm not doing anything suspicious, really. Why do you always assume I've got some ulterior motive or hidden agenda? Then why is a dirt poor rat like you here at this extravagant party? I know. Could it be you're having an affair? You actually believe that sleeping with the boss will magically lift you out of poverty? Impressive. I bet your husband is beaming with pride, huh? Or maybe he's well aware of your little tryst with the boss, but simply turns a blind eye? Well, 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 you two make quite the pair. Shameless and money-hungry to the core. What are you saying? You're totally wrong. 
You have a very wild imagination, I must say. Whatever. Just get out of here ASAP. I don't want anyone to get word that I know a peasant like you. Wow, you're being really rude. Get out, now! Why do I have to leave my own house? What? What are you talking about? This is my husband boss's house. He's the president of the entire company. You must be dreaming if you think this is your house. Maybe you're delusional from working so hard to pay for that shoebox apartment of yours. I'm not delusional. Like I said, this is my house. And like I said, this is my husband's boss's house. This is the house that my father-in-law had built so my husband and I could live with him. Huh? If you don't believe me, why don't you ask your foreman husband? I've met him plenty of times when I've gone to visit the factory for inspection. He should recognize me right away. You know my husband? What's happening? I don't really understand what you're saying right now. What about that shoebox studio apartment you guys live in? Oh, you must not understand. Our building does have studio apartments, but they have bigger ones too. We don't live in a studio. We actually live in a three-room apartment with a full kitchen and dining room. It was just a place for us to stay during the time when our new house was being built. We moved out last week. No way. I had no idea about that. Of course you didn't. I never said anything to you about it. Why didn't you tell me sooner? That was very rude of you to keep that a secret. Saying my father-in-law is the company president, I'm the general manager and the heir to the company sounds a little arrogant, don't you think? We were never that close, so I never felt the timing was right to say it. Oh, I had no idea. Even if I told you, would you have believed me? Every time I talked to you, you either insulted me or acted like I was crazy. I... Uh... That's not fair. It feels like you were deliberately keeping that information away from me. Whatever. None of that matters anymore. All the other mothers I'm close with know about it, and that's all that matters to me. There's no way. The other mothers despise you. That's why they never invite you anywhere anymore. Well, actually, all those mothers who you're so close with, I've never really gotten along with any of them. In fact, they're considered kind of outcasts by the other mothers. You're lying. I'm in a group text with all the other moms from kindergarten. We've even titled our group chat Queen Moms. Everyone in that group always badmouths you. How could I be hated by the other moms if I'm in that group chat? You're just jealous you're not included. Oh, yeah, I know all about that group. All the other mothers call it the self-proclaimed queen moms group chat. What are you saying? What do you mean self-proclaimed? Sure, I know that group text has a lot of wealthy or well-off mothers in it. And they're all, how can I put this? Very enthusiastic about sharing their opinions on others. We just let them say what they want because they think they're above anyone else. Don't think that's what all the other moms are really like. You're lying. I thought that was what the majority of the moms were like. But what about your husband? What about those old ragged clothes he always wear to work? If you're really as well off as you say you are, why would he ever wear those dirty old clothes from 40 years ago? Like I said, that's the style he likes. He's into fashion. Those are all vintage clothes. Oh, please. You actually consider that fashion? No matter how you look at it, it's nothing but garbage, plain and simple. Yeah, and he knows fashion, being a fashion designer and all. There's no dress code at his job, so he gets to go to work wearing whatever style he likes. You can't be serious. Your husband is a fashion designer? What about the company? My father-in-law actually wanted my husband to step into his shoes and run the company, but he turned it down. He's really dedicated to his passion for fashion, you know? That's why my father-in-law has already made the decision that I'll be taking over as the president of the company once he decides to retire. 
What? Y you? The president? Oh my god! By the way, do you see the guy my father-in-law, I mean, the company president, is talking to right now? In the name brand bespoke suit? The good-looking guy? Yeah, that's my husband. No way, but his clothes aren't old and tacky like usual. Like I said, not old. Vintage. <laughs> of course he wouldn't show up to an event like this in those clothes. He has more fashion sense than anyone after all. Oh, I guess he does. Anyway, gotta go. My husband just texted me and said we have to go give a welcome speech to everyone at the party. As I was sending a text to Lauren from the corner of the room, my husband called me over. We were about to give our welcome speech to kick off the party, but to my surprise, Lauren was nowhere to be found. I wondered if she was feeling utterly embarrassed by what had happened earlier. However, I noticed a change in her behavior when we were around the other moms. She started being more friendly towards me, but it was clear that everyone was aware of her true nature how snobbish and rude she could be. No one bought into her act, and as a result, she was even expelled from the Queen Moms group. I can only imagine how lonely she must be feeling these days. Meanwhile, our kids seem to be getting along really well. A few days after the party, Lauren's husband approached me and sincerely apologized for everything she had put me through. He had gone through her phone and discovered all of the abusive messages she had been sending me. Now, he keeps a close eye on her and they even decided to temporarily move back in with his parents. It's not the most spacious arrangement for the two of them, especially when compared to our new house, but that's not my concern. They made their choices and now they have to live with them. So, Lauren, enjoy your new life. I certainly won't lose any sleep over it.